It Happened on the Job, the podcast for relatable conversations with contractors. Sponsored by Goodman Insurance. Welcome to It Happened on the Job. We are your podcast for relatable and relevant conversations with contractors. Hopefully bringing a little entertainment to you as well. Episode 71 today. My name is Mike. That's Brian. Hello, hello. And uh, with us today, we got Mark Karch, President and CEO of The Rain Drain. How you doing, sir? Pretty good. How about yourself, Mike? Good. Thanks for joining us, man. We appreciate you coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. We uh, wanted to uh, kind of get started by maybe letting us know how you got started in this industry, uh, you know, the contractors construction area, and, and you know, that, that journey to where you are now with your own company. Okay. It's been a long journey. Um, my father actually started the company in 1983 with limited experience. His, uh, he had a friend who was an um, HVAC contractor, and he happened to have a gutter machine. And uh, it was a little side part of it. And it wasn't doing too well. So he hired my dad, which is Tony, to um, take it over, to run it. And so he did that and ended up getting his license and started the rain drain. Uh, I graduated in 87, started working for him in 88. In 1995, we uh, incorporated and um, I took, came into the business as a quarter owner. And in 98, I took over completely. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow. And just, uh, you guys, so you guys are just doing, uh, and when I say just, I don't, mean, I don't mean to dumb, dumb it down, but yeah, <laughs> no, so I no, mean no, just no, exclusively rain gutters, right? Just, just be good at one thing, gutters, right? Correct. Yep, exactly. Very cool. Are you guys more in the yeah, residential yeah. space or commercial how, or maybe both? Or? More residential. We mostly do residential. Yeah. Uh, at one point, my father and myself also until about 2001 was about 50% new construction track work. Oh wow! But nowadays, I don't do any. I don't do any track work. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty much all residential a... uh, customs and fire well, builds lately. What area are you guys in? We're in Ventura County, actually in Camarillo. So we service all of Ventura County and a little bit of Southern Santa Barbara area, Montecito, Santa Barbara, Goleta, and a little bit in the Valley, the San Gabriel Valley, Woodland Hills, that area. But mostly cool. Ventura County. Yeah. So when when your dad started it and and when you were working for him, what was the what was the size of the company? How many how many guys do you guys have working for you then versus kind of where you are now? Actually, and- actually, actually, we've stayed similar size the whole time. Uh, we've actually, right now, it's probably the smallest we've ever been. Um, he had uh, up to six guys working. I've had at times up to six, seven guys working. Uh, right now, I actually have two, three, four, four, five of us. Hey, including yourself? myself correct okay so what's uh what what are the what are the what are the roles there what, what do you what kind of hats do you wear in, in the business and and what kind of things <laughs> do you do versus uh, I, I pretty much do everything around here uh i install i have an estimated a couple estimators but i do <laughs> half estimates i do all the scheduling i do too much, <laughs> <laughs> I pretty much we're, we're a small business and i've pretty much been doing too much of it so it's labor is a difficult thing nowadays it's hard to get good people. Yeah, no, that's definitely a, a theme among uh, a lot of the contractors yeah. we speak to. So, kind of on that, how do you how do you go about finding people when you need people, and and, and you know what do you do to kind of keep them to make sure that you know you're not having to the high turnover? <laughs> yeah, well, basically, um, like I said, we're a small business over here. Um, a lot of people I've hired have been friends or acquaintances of friends. Every once in a while, I'll put an ad in the uh, local. Uh, newspaper or something to try to get people in here um typically oh it's try to treat them right to treat, treat them fairly to keep them around but in this business they're pretty much the good ones are going to pretty much go off do something else this is an extraction job you know i've had some guys stay here up 10 years uh oh, wow. other guys you know turn over a little more quickly than that but um right now i have a I had to let go of one of my main guys. Uh, he was here for five, six years, but I had to let him go for personal for reasons. And then my son is pretty much my senior guy, but he's going off to his college next week. So <laughs> kind of hurting it for workers right now. Yeah. Have you yeah, seen? Yes. Yeah. Are you are you are you kind of 
lean right now on, on employees because of the, the situation that we're in socially with, with all the crap that's going on, or is it just a choice? No, that you made? I, I, I think it's uh, I think a lot of it is uh, people don't really want to work when they could get this big fat uh, unemployment check. It seems yeah, like. you know, that's, uh, uh, so, so maybe, that's definitely maybe an issue. In, uh, yeah, maybe not in areas where they're getting paid, you know, hundred thousand a year, but obviously they're not getting paid hundred thousand dollars a year in selling getters. So, so with that six hundred dollar uh, unemployment check plus whatever the unemployment is on top of that, it doesn't give them much incentive to actually go out and do the same amount of work. Do make the same amount for the same work for working instead. For yeah, actually right, just stay yeah. at home. Yeah, stay at home, watch a movie, watch Netflix. They're yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. So well, we and we were kind of. When, yeah, talking to people back in like June and July, uh, the the thought process was hopefully that ends in August and and, and they'll be able to kind of kind of see that come back. But I think you know it ended for what a week or two and then they just bumped it round. back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not six hundred anymore, it's, but uh, I think it's only four hundred. But still, it's it's uh, yeah, it's not exactly. much incentive to get out there and thin. find a job. That's on top of what they're getting for unemployment. Right. So basically, if I'm, right. I'm paying them seven, eight hundred a week, they're taking home four hundred, five hundred a week for unemployment plus the four hundred. Yeah, that's yeah. more than they're making for me. So why would yeah. they want to come to work? Right. Yeah, no, that's definitely so, definitely difficult. Well, what's is, the uh, what's the workflow been th- like for you guys throughout this? Uh, we've actually been working the whole time. Yeah. And so typically our season is seasonal. Somewhere we work all year round, but. Um, from late August to December, and then to the end of the rainy season, it's usually we're slammed. We're like eight weeks backlogged. Uh-huh. Uh, then the rest of the time, we're just kind of yeah. slow. This year has been kind of odd because uh, we had some fires up here two years ago. Oh, yeah. In Ventura, Thomas Fire. And so the, right now, all that construction is pretty much finishing up. So out mm. of 400 houses that burned down, I probably did about 70 of them. Oh, wow. Jeez. So it's been keeping us really busy the last year or two. Yeah, dang, man. So it's kind of weird on the COVID thing. Is it just shut down, and this this last May was probably one of the best Mays I've ever had. And, and that's right because of COVID, COVID or is that COVID and the Thomas I think fire? Do, both. Oh, yeah. I think people are sitting at home trying to reduce, do get work done in their house. These obviously they uh, they weren't working, so they're doing a lot of home improvement stuff. Yeah, yeah. And also the Thomas fires are finishing up. So yeah, I feel like. That's been kind of a common theme too. Is is uh, you know, people getting work from from uh, people sitting at home and, and staring at the house and going, yeah, maybe it's time to fix that, or staring at the backyard and go, yeah, maybe it's time we redo the backyard, or yeah, a lot of those correct, things. Correct, correct. I've been seeing that a lot lately. Uh, it's been interesting the last six months. Hit that way. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys? It's been very interesting. With you. I assume you guys had to make some changes when, when approaching homeowners. Like how, how did that process work for you guys? And, oh, and one of the correct. things you did. Um, biggest thing is no more handshakes. You know, yeah. obviously you're going out and talking to people, you're shaking their hands. Nowadays, you don't shake your hands. Yeah. Every once in a while, if you know somebody might do a little fist bump, but you pretty much <laughs> try to keep your social distance. <laughs> Six feet, you know, wear a mask. So. I guess it's easy with you guys. What were you doing, right? With most of your work being on, yeah, uh, most exterior. all your work being on the exterior. We're, we're out house, that, yeah. we're outdoors, and uh, so basically we we talk to the customers. You know, when you get the job, talk to her, talk to them for a few minutes, and then we're out on our own. So yeah, unless they're inclined with the ladder, there's not too much. They're near us, so not too bad. It's funny what is, though. Uh, my wife is a. R- I'm gonna go tell ahead. the story. My funny. My wife is our RN, and she works at one of the local hospitals. And so I tell people that, and they all, I'm actually take a step back. <laughs> <laughs> You're a carrier? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, but you know, she does work at the hospital, so she's an RN. That's funny. And they do have COVID patients in the hospital. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. What, um, That's kind of funny, so. From an employee standpoint, I mean, it, what you guys do is pretty specialized. Are you able to find people with experience, or are you more looking to bring somebody on that, that kind of fits, you know, the the mentality and, the, and what you're looking for and you can train them both I mean, obviously well, it's preferred to get a, a experienced guy because it usually takes somebody a good two years to get fully trained yeah so um i mean you get somebody in there and the first week they could pick up what they need to do but to be fully aware of what needs to go happen everywhere uh it takes a couple of years so that's the that? problem with the turnover 
Yeah. What does that process look like for you guys? Are you, do you have somebody, maybe your son or somebody else that kind of, kind of takes them under their wing and shows them how to do everything? Or is that your job or how do you guys do that? Uh, That's pretty much my job. Yeah. I was try to get the guys to help out with that, but, um, that doesn't always work that way. It's, uh, it's been, um, easier in the past and isn't lately. So to try to get the guys to train them on the job, you know, obviously go and give them the basic training. And then it's pretty much just, when you're on the job, just the different things you have to do. It's just experience in doing them. So, yeah. So that's kind of, that kind of falls on you. It's, it's, you're bringing in those new guys and, and, and having them follow you and teaching them how, how you guys operate. Correct. Yeah. Correct. This last guy I had, he's been with us for about six, seven months. No, actually he's been around nine months now. He started in the end of December and, uh, first four months he's been with me the whole time. So now he's going out on zone. He's going out on zone a little bit. So he's getting, he's coming along. He had prior experience in construction, but not really necessarily in, uh, in rain gutters. Rain gutters. Yeah. Very cool. So is the, is the plan for maybe is your son going to go to school and then and come back and, and take over the business or what's the? No, no, he's uh, going. For, he's going for um, aerospace engineering. Oh, oh wow. gosh, he's a smart kid. Yeah, he's better off doing that. <laughs> That's a little bit uh, a little bit more high tech than putting together rain gutters, huh? Yeah, correct, correct. That's crazy. That's awesome, though. That's that's got to be fun. Yeah, it should be fun for him. Um, obviously, education is the way to go nowadays. In California, it's difficult to be a contractor. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that, we're, we're not the easiest. Long thing. hours. Yeah. And you're always having to fight for your money. It's just um, <laughs> nothing easy in California. Well, so kind of on that, People what are say, yeah, what are some of the what are some of the challenges that you guys face? Uh, you know, business, um, yeah. yeah. Just between government regulations and um, you know OSHA rules and the uh, high cost of living and achieving a decent wage, and um, oh, it's, trying to collect money from the com- customers. Those are the biggest problems right there. Yeah, no, obviously, I, I would assume kind of the the collection is probably on top of that list. Is there something you guys do to you try and either combat well, that or, or mitigate that? We try. Um, haven't been successful totally sometimes. Um, my father was great at it. I'm just not as good as he was. Um, <laughs> it's basically always getting on the phone and calling him up, you know, where's the money, where's the money, where's the money? You're chasing it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You're chasing it, and I hate chasing the money. It's just a pain. And the majority of people pay, you know, it's not a problem. It's just, uh, the problem is at, we're at the end of the job. So they've paid all these other expenses all the way through and the budget's getting tight at the very end. And then the guy, last guy's the one's not getting paid. So mm. but typically I've been get pretty good about it. I've collected the majority of the money. So this is a little ones that don't seem to come in or the ones you don't get kind of seem to hurt a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> this is the okay. line with the profit loss. So. Yeah, that yeah. I'm assuming you're probably getting pretty good at uh at filing liens <laughs> different projects. The right? liens are actually uh liens are a difficult thing to do. Yeah, they're not easy. Yep. Um no, well, it's not it, easy at all. I filed a few. Um actually had a few were actually successful, I actually got the money. A few of them they've um they kind of went right over the top of it. But um yeah, it's it's difficult dealing with the contractors. So a little tip, I don't, I don't know if this maybe help you. We, we, we work with contractors all the time. What, so one thing that, um, right. one that, uh, one thing that we've heard that some people do, and, and I don't know how easy this can be done or, or what kind of calls you have to make, but, uh, if you know an attorney or, you know, can, can get a hold of one, they've been able to put like a, uh, demand for payment letter on an attorney letterhead. That scares the shit yeah, out of correct. some people. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, yeah. I've, <laughs> so before I've you got to go through that you know? whole process of filing a lien, it uh, send out exactly, that letter. exactly. Yeah. yeah, you got a little. I've actually done similar stuff to that. Send a uh, a pre lien, which is a preliminary notice. Yeah, it really didn't say much, but just makes them think, oh, it's official. Maybe I should pay up. And yeah, mm-hmm. kind of scares the crap out of them a little actually. bit. Yeah, it actually works. It's just the ninety day thing. Is like we'll build the contractors, you know, thirty days, not a problem. Um, after 30 days, when you don't get the money, you have, you know, tight time frame to actually try to use the lean process to get paid. Yeah. What, um, are you guys working more directly for the homeowners or for, the same or question. for yeah. like contractors in the, in the building process? It can be contractors are probably my, uh, lifeline in my business. I mean, yeah. I probably got about 30, 30 contractors I work for 
And uh, without them, we wouldn't be in business. Simple as that. The homeowners, you know, they call up and you got to compete for them. The contractors are guys that are calling you up and they just want you to do the job. So, so that's, that's where you, that's, yeah, that's where you get most of your businesses is working for contractors that you guys have worked for in the past. Correct. Correct. And they uh, were actually referred, do a lot of referrals to a lot of the homeowners are actually referred by the contractors. Okay. You got a tight little yeah, network. Good. Yeah, that's the way you have to do it. It's the only way you get actually get business <laughs> around here. So, it's you see yourself a tight, uh, industry. Oh Go yeah, ahead. for sure. Do you see yourself expanding that at in any? You know, maybe trying to find more more, more contractors or no, no, yeah, or spreading it out. Always, you're always trying to uh, trying to find more. Um, as long as you keep the workload going. The thing is with the contractors, they want it done. They need it done right. You know, soon. You know, you can put them off a little while, but you can't put them off too long. Right. Yeah, they need to go somewhere else. Yeah, risk losing that that, that relationship yeah. for sure. So a lot of the homeowners get kind of pushed off a little bit. Uh, obviously, have to give priority to the contractors. Yeah. And then, well, in the busy season, that's usually only affects you during September through the end of the rainy season. That's when you get so slammed. You can't keep up with everything. <laughs> hey, I mean, you guys actually, I mean, have you been out there in the middle of the rain putting them up? Like, Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But it doesn't rain that often in California. I mean, yeah. I've definitely worked in the rain a few times. Try not to, but we use typically don't work, but uh, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. That's so usually when a, the customer's calling up saying, yeah, right. where's my rain going? <laughs> you said you were going to do this a long time ago. Why isn't this done yet? <laughs> That's not even happening. It actually rained and we need them. <laughs> yeah. So and from, then lately when it's raining, it's been pouring. It's, it rains hard like, nowadays. So. Right. Not for a long time, but it, when it rains, it rains hard. Yeah, exactly. So kind of going Believe back. Or not, there's no, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. You finish your thought. Oh, no. Um, basically, I said, believe it or not, actually, rain getters do uh, serve a purpose, especially in the heavy rains. Oh, oh for, for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah. And it's like one of those things you don't really recognize that you need it until you don't have it, right? And it's pouring. Yeah, exactly. And you might be all right where the water's falling in your head, but when later on afterwards and you have all this wood rot and uh, Erosion. stains all over your stucco and, uh, yeah. you know, foundation's cracking because it's been draining right there, then you kind of realize, oh, God, maybe I should have had gutters. <laughs> and actually, a lot of them, the doors, the doors, uh, the garage doors, the side garage doors, those things get warped out quick. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then the people in Spain, as much as they would have paid for the gutters on the whole house to replace the door. So. Yeah, especially since a lot of those are fire doors too. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Jeez. Oh. Well, you know, I kind of want to circle back to uh, what we were talking about in terms of new employees when you bring them on that training process. And, and let's just say that this is a, a, a decent person that's kind of made it through. He's working alongside of you. But I guess probably a question I have is given the labor shortage that's happening, you know, especially with COVID and, and then being able to get uh, funding from other sources currently, you know, do a lot of these guys, are, are they sticking around for those two years? I know you mentioned there's a couple guys that have been around for six, seven, eight, nine months, but, um, it, you know, do they stick around? And if so, or if not, like how, how long is, does it take before you recognize that these guys aren't quality guys? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, pretty that's much. a lot of questions right there. I just asked you. <laughs> a lot of questions. Yeah. We, we, um, if obviously somebody's good. We try to take care of them to keep them around. A lot of turnover and the guys that aren't really that good, they kind of fade away pretty quickly. So like not showing up for work or works out. not showing up for work. And I, I'm pretty mean, you know, a lot of that stuff and they come in late, but, um, it is, um, one of those things. So. I guess pro how about, how about, here's a question. What, what's your firing process look like? I think that that would be a helpful. Oh, it takes it takes a lot to get fired from over here, but, uh, especially in California, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, it's, it's typically if they uh, you know they don't show up to work or they do something bad, they just have to let them go. You just give them a few chances before I do that. Yeah. So when it happens, it happens. So, and like I said, I'm, I'm pretty much a small business. So yeah, mom and pop type shop. So yep, I just do what I got to do. So doing the work you do, and especially working for, it sounds like you're doing a lot of work with, with contractors who are requesting your service. Are you able to kind of forecast the future and, and, and kind of uh, budget and plan that stuff out? Or is it just, hey, we, you know, kind of get yeah, the work as it comes? Yeah, we can a little bit. Um, basically, well, like when the Thomas fire hit, all these houses burned. Um, 
all my contractors were they're all had we're signed up for like five ten houses each so you kind of see it how it's going along where they're building a breaking ground they have their sign up there and you kind of figure it out well this guy to give me a call when he's ready for me right so a lot of the bud they do a lot of plans up straight up the plan so they have kind of idea what's going to go on in the future but it's almost like a year lag time right because you're looking at you know, definitely. Yeah. I mean, Thomas Fire is two years ago and you're finishing up a lot of these Thomas Fire homes in the last, what, six correct. months, I think you said. Yeah. Because you're the yeah, last one the on last the job, year. right? Yeah, correct. I'm one of the last ones on the job. So, yeah, yeah they're probably about 80% done over there in Thomas Fire rebuilds. Okay. But then they had this other fire um, in the following year in Malibu, which is right up down the coast from us. Yeah. So that should be starting up in the next, starting up right now. It should be for the next year or so. So it's kind of it, what's nice for you is is that doing the the work that you do it's it's almost like you can you can see work pretty far out because are, are you getting contacted when when the you know to do the drains when 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 the 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 job starts in the very beginning or do they wait to the very end and say oh hey Mark we would like you to come do this pretty immediately both both. Um, yeah, sometimes they well, they they want to bid, they want to um, estimate or up the plans before they right. when they're bidding it, so they get the job. And the, most of them will tell me, "Oh yeah, you got the job." Other ones will just kind of just put it off to the end and then tell me, "Oh, we're you know, we got the stucco done. We need to get up here and put the gutters on." <laughs> <laughs> go go go! So <laughs> Jack's always go go go. And I'll be all like, "Oh, geez, I'm a uh, you know eight weeks out right now, so, but I'll tell you what, I'll get it within three, two three weeks. You know, yeah, if you could wait that long." Yeah, that's what you typically do. So being around for as long as you have, I got to imagine you've, you've seen some stuff and, and this is kind of the, uh, the, the precipice of, of the title of our show, right? It happened on the job. Anything kind of yeah. weird, crazy, funny that, uh, that you've seen happen or, or been involved in? Oh, well, I was kind of trying to think of some stories earlier. Um, I know there's a bunch of them. No, um, I have drawn a blank now. Let me get back to that. If I come up with something, I'll come up. I'll let you know. No, no, you're good. No worries. I know it. Uh, it's some. Oh, sometimes. I know go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say. Sometimes it's hard once when, when you're put on the spot to kind of think about those things or <laughs> or remember some yeah, of the good ones. Mean. Get a get a couple of beers know, in here, right? Um, Sit at the bar, and it, they might come back, back to you. It's just flowing. <laughs> uh, I know there was one. Um, oh, jeez. Yeah, I didn't know exactly what you kind of stories you guys are looking for on the that end of it. Oh, it doesn't matter, we, man. We've We're had just, the gamut, yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. It's just funny yeah. every once in a while. It, don't worry about it. It's, it's just funny sometimes to uh, kind of hear some of those things that happen. We we love hearing that kind of stuff. It's uh, yeah. Well, there's definitely been some uh, some crazy stuff happened over the years. Oh, I'm sure. I I'm I sure. don't know how much it's uh, appropriate to share on your show. <laughs> we, we we are we are listed as explicit on all the major networks. So oh, you can say okay. what you want to say. As long as it's not racist. I or gotcha. like I, don't, I don't know if I want to be in your ass with him, so. I hear you. That, that, yeah. we, we've had that before, too. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How that can come turn around and bite yeah, you right. in the end. Right. <laughs> So what's what's the what's the future look like for you guys? Are are you kind of are you content with with where you guys are at from a business flow standpoint? Is there aspirations to grow? Um, Maybe kind of shrink it down so it's more manageable. What's the what's the future look like? Yeah, you know, I'm thinking we uh, really need to grow to make some money, but I'm looking to get out of this business. I've been doing it for thirty years. I'm getting really burned on it. Yeah, <laughs> I still got ten or ten, fifteen years to retire, but oh man, it's tough. Is there something else you would uh, try and do in this in this industry or a different industry or? I don't know. That's what the key is there. I've been looking around. Um, I don't know what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I got luckily my wife's an RN, so she's uh, kind of my sugar mama there. <laughs> <laughs> she makes good money. Hopefully, I'll keep it up. Now the the nurses have some low. Uh, Work work career lifespans just because they get hurt in their back so much. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, she's been she's been that for a few years, but she keeps telling me, "No, you gotta keep working. <laughs> oh, you gotta keep working, honey." <laughs> That's funny. So one of these days, maybe I keep saying that, but when I keep working at it. That's the thing is, uh, it's always been when everything goes wrong, I just work harder. Yeah, it's getting to the point where it's kind of hard to work harder anymore. I guess the age is getting up to me, so I feel mm-hmm. feel it. Yeah, it's time for yeah, you to time know. for you to sit I'm, in the I'm office and just do the scheduling, thing. man. You got to get off the roofs. 
And off the ladders. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, that's what I need to do. But that's the hardest part when you're when an owner. You always want to have your hands on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, learning to uh, kind of let go of some of that is is uh, you know a big step from an ownership standpoint. But I, I mean, I guess the one definitely. thing nice about having your own business, right? I mean, you can kind of control the workflow and control the income. Mm-hmm. You know, you need money. You guys get Correct. out there and do some work, and you know, if you, you want to take some well, time off, you take some money. time off. Really, how it really works out is you always whatever comes in, you just tackling it as it comes in. Yeah. So it's so always a constant process of winging it. You're yeah. Always constantly winging it. Yeah. It's like today, some might come in like whatever happens is employees the show doesn't show up or the people call up a cancel or can't get the material from the supply house or the truck breaks down or just whatever else it could be. You just play it by ear and just do the best you can that day. Yep. Yeah, which actually is kind of a fun thing. I mean, if you think about it versus like sitting in an office under a fluorescent light, you know, just dealing with the mundane, the same, same old, same old, you know, at least it keeps you on your toes, you know, it keeps you fresh. <laughs> yeah, it definitely keeps you, it keeps you interesting. You're always, uh, always doing something. Right. So. Very cool. We appreciate the time, Mark. We'll, we'll let you run and, and, and get on with it. And, and hopefully you're not climbing too many ladders today, but you know, getting to get <laughs> actually not today. Not That's today, good today. Let me guys ask you a question. If I wanted to listen to this, how would I do that? Yeah. So we're actually on all the major podcast yep. networks. Um, that means like Apple, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll, uh, Stitcher. we'll get, we get it off to our editor and it usually takes a little bit for him to get back to us just because we have a little bit of lag time, but uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch and we'll, we'll make sure we get you, uh, the information on, on when it comes out and, uh, how to, uh, disseminate that amongst your people and your peers and your friends. And, uh, we'll Great. make sure everybody gets to hear it. But before we let you go, make awesome. sure we want to give you an opportunity to kind of let the people know where to find yeah. you. Uh, if, you okay. know, if you got websites or social media or however they can find you. Yep, definitely. Uh, we're the rain drain and, um, we have our own website, www.therangerain.com, and we're in Ventura County in Camarillo, California. Um, feel free to go on our website and uh, give us a, you send us an email, and we'll be happy to service your grain getter needs. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate the time. Keep in touch. Stay Thank safe. You guys. And yeah, uh, thanks, yeah we'll, okay. we'll, we'll catch up with you in a little bit. I appreciate it. Thank have you very a good much. one, sir. You too. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you've made it this far, go ahead and give us a like or five stars or whatever means you like us. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode. And check out our website for more video content and extras. While you're there, shoot us a message if you want to be a guest. We'd love to have you on. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.